So as the sun sets, trying to get the lighting just right, just wanted to get a quick video out uh, to talk about uh, cybersecurity, which was my business and uh, or attempted business. And uh, I guess I feel like the Joker. Let the chaos reign, baby. We got uh, meat packing plants going down. We got pipelines going down. And that's because there's idiots. There's idiots in charge of those things. They don't know shit about cybersecurity. And uh, anyway, I and you know, and most people they just they don't care. You know, if your computer gets hacked, so what? You know. Um, so, you know, uh, I could give you a couple quick stories first, but let's just get with uh, the first one here. This is the book. <clears throat> See, somebody told me this is better as a paperweight than it was as a cybersecurity book. Now, if you've ever been to college, it's about the size of a textbook on uh, cybersecurity. It took me five years, by the way, to write this, working almost sometimes 8, 10, 15 hours a day. Uh, the technology changed. Edward Snowden came out with his revelations. I had to completely rewrite the book. I was going to publish in 2013. I ended up publishing in 2016. But let's just, just talk a little bit about stupidity. Um, so to get a review, you know, I ran out of money. It cost me, um, well, I spent uh, about twenty twenty five thousand on this whole project. Uh, stupid money, it turned out. Um, and I, one of the ways that you go about uh, when you write a book is you try to get people to review it. So let's just name a few of the places where I sent free books, uh, hoping that somebody might review the book. There was a Marine Corps League, ignored. Disabled American Veterans, ignored. Rolling Stone Magazine, ignored. American Legion Magazine, ignored. Internet Advisor Radio, ignored. The ACLU, ignored. Forward Magazine, ignored. Library Journal, ignored. Kim Commando Radio, ignored. Kirk on, Kirk on Security, ignored. American Public Media, multiple venues at American APR, uh, ignored. I mean, you, when you listen to APR, they'll, they'll put on a transgender book, but they don't want to talk about in a topic like cybersecurity for individuals or small business. Oh, no, we wouldn't want to do that. But, uh, you know, anyway, PC World, ignored. PC Magazine, ignored. Michigan Radio, ignored. Midwest Library, ignored. list goes on and on. And uh, a lot of these, those books, uh, they, these cost $50 a piece to uh, publish, by the way. And uh, a lot of them ended up on uh, Amazon and other places where they were doing resales. And some of those uh, venues got multiple copies. Of course, it's recorded in the Library of Congress. That was multiple copies. Um, I don't understand. I don't understand why nobody wanted to review it. I, I, you know, I understand you look at it, it's intimidating. You think, my God, who wants a book that big? But I just wanted to read a little bit about what the book was about. And by the way, I'm like the Joker. <laughs> Let the chaos reign. Let the hackers get in there. You know, I could be one of them. I could be out making money. You know, I know how to do that stuff. That's why I wrote a book on how to prevent it. So I, I don't really care. I'm just watching as chaos descends. And, uh, you know, it, okay. Um, am I feeling vindictive? Am I feeling, uh, uh, yeah, somewhat. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't want to see prices go up because it affects me too. I don't want to see my chicken prices go up. But you know what? I told you so. I wrote a book on it and I was completely ignored, but let's just read a little bit about what it was about. Okay, how to create an SSH server that will provide an encrypted connection for your mobile devices to maintain um, confidentiality and integrity of data over an unsecured network such as a hotspot. Story behind that, I hired a lawyer agency and uh, they had me sharing confidential documents on an FTP server. An FTC server is completely unsecure. Okay, and a woman, she went, she. One of the lawyers actually went to a conference in Washington, D.C. and made $250,000 on cybersecurity. And I'm telling her, her company, which is running an FTP server, is completely unsecure and hackable. This is the insanity that we live in. All right, so here, let's just get to the next one. Create a multi-boot USB drive. Okay, well, there you go. 
uh, you know, it's nice to, to have a multi-boot USB drive, and I've snuck into libraries. A lot of them didn't know how to protect the PCs properly, because, uh, you know, they had probably had some kids securing the computers. And I was able to boot into my own operating system, and I could have used those computers to hack anywhere in the world, you know, from, from their location, keeping my, my uh, um, hacking software completely secure. Because you could, yeah, you can run an IP check, you can check the ISP, but if I'm coming from a library, oh well. Plus there's lots of uh, really great stuff you can multi-boot off a USB drive using Yummy. Um, let's just continue. Use the latest virtualization technology with your four top Linux operating systems uh, to keep your OS secure from the internet. Now what does that mean? You can layer uh, an operating system on top of an operating system, which would, if you go way back to the 1960s, uh, we had multiple operating systems with the IBM computers. Uh, it, it was virtualization, so you could keep them completely separate from each other. You know, with PCs and Macs and whatnot, you're really just having the virtual operating system running through an interpretation software on top of the PC. Um, and that keeps you secure because if they if they hack into the computer, they can corrupt that virtual operating system and invert. In theory, they can't get to the operating system underneath. Now there are ways to get to the operating system underneath, but you really got to know what the hell you're doing. And the m number of people in the world that could do that to get to the uh, both get to the first operating system, there's many, but get underneath the virtualization software that would require some real talent. So. Uh, learn how to load, configure, and clean up Windows. That was back in Windows 7. And I, I put it together like a 100-point list of, of things that you need to do to secure Windows 7. Because you got to understand, Microsoft, even, even after fiasco with XP, which was the most insecure operating system on the history of the, of the planet, Okay, they would send Windows 7 out with everything wide open. There was ports that you needed to close. I mean, because they were trying to appeal to the, the you know, the average person who doesn't know a damn thing about computers, you know. But, I mean, if you just read this chapter, even if you were an average person, you would have figured out how to do all these things. Because I taught you step by step by step how to do it. And, of course, businesses could have, could have benefited from that. Um, learn how the whole world is spying, spying on your smartphone and how to secure it. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about smartphones. That's probably one of my weakest chapters, but I did go out and do a lot of research on how to secure your smartphone. And back then, we had dark phones, which you could buy, uh, which, you know, if you needed encryption technology, you know, right now, you know, Signal is, is somewhat compromised. And I hear Matrix is a better solution to encrypt your, your phone calls and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm not the, the premier authority on securing a smartphone. But, I mean, there's simple things that you can do to, to, to secure them. Signal, I mean, even though Elon Musk said, oh, Signal. Yeah, I, I've read a, a lot about uh, the insecurity because they... they they basically caved in and they wanted to make a profit, but we won't go there. We're not into that. Uh, learn how the latest atomization techniques with a few added twists to keep corporation and tag trackers from collecting uh, infrastructure about your IP address, your current location, where you live, your ISP, what you're clicking on, who you've been talking to, uh, what you search for, and much more. Most people, I get that line all the time. What do I care? What do I care if they're spying on me? I don't give a crap if they're collecting all that information. Well, they're collecting it and they're selling it. So, yeah, they're making a nice hefty profit off of you. Let's look at Google, Facebook, t well, fake book, excuse me, tweet, you know, all of the big uh, tech companies. Um, I, but there were, there were ways that you could uh, you can atomize that software. Tor, Tor look at Tor. Um, and they call that the, the dark net, you know, it's not the damn dark net. It's just you use an atomization. You can use proxies. You can use uh, Tor. There's multiple ways that you can get out on the Internet and obscure your IP address and everything else. Uh, there's no reason for you to allow the government and, and ISPs and everybody else to track everything you do on the Internet. And, and why do you want that? You know, I always give the example when you put a letter in an envelope okay and it's a handwritten letter and you've got something confidential in there and you mail it to your your sister your daughter or your, your whoever you don't want the mailman opening your damn letter and reading it all along the way which is what happens when you send an unencrypted email that's another thing you know let's get okay let's just keep going all right never mind learn multiple methods to encrypt your data email directories storage devices automate the encryption of files and exchange with your partners 
Okay, how many businesses, I mean, I, and this was, okay, great, great story, great story. So I'm at um, the American Legion, and I was real happy. It was just after the book was published, and I'm in there, and uh, I, was, I was showing everybody the book and talking about it. And this one guy goes, yeah, man, that might sell, you know, that might be a good book. I said, oh, yeah, I said, he says, yeah, man, my business, my small business was hacked, and I lost, uh, I lost $500,000. Well, the book at that time cost $80. I said, well, damn, man, you need a copy of my book. Oh, man, I could never read something like that. There's no way in hell. I, could, I make widgets, man. I don't, I don't need to get into that type of thing. I said, well, you know, who's doing your security? Oh, my nephew. He took two years of community college, and he knows all about computers. I, I said, well, you just got hacked for $500,000. He says, well, yeah, but he, he learned what it, what it was, and he's, he's taken other measures now to secure the computers. I'm going to pause right there. $500,000 loss, $80 book. Do the math. Okay, even if he just gave it to his damn nephew to read. Did he buy a book? No. Okay. Uh, learn how to deal with the internet service provider and how to choose the bandwidth that you really need. Okay, um, it, it's still a, a contention. Not as much today as it was back then. Because, you know, there's always multiple speeds. Do you need gigabyte? Do you, do you need 10 gigabyte? Do you, do you, back then it was 3 meg or whatever, 10 meg. Um, and sometimes 15 meg. You know, and, and, and the price would go up uh, sometimes exponentially. And, uh, you know, are you downloading? Are you uploading? And then, you know, I taught you all about all of those things. And, uh, and also all the nefarious techniques that the Internet service providers use to rip everybody off. Um, it's still here. You know, you still got it. I, every day, I mean, how many, how many CenturyLink Spectrum, uh, you know, AT&T, you know, solicitations do you get in the mail every week? You know, all right, let's keep going. Learn about the components that make up a computer server and how to build your own. Okay, you say, well, I don't want to build my own damn computer. You know, why would I want to do that? I can just go to Best Buy or, uh, you know, my local computer shop and kind of tell them what I want and, and let them do it. Okay. I want, I'm going to cut my grass and uh, I'll go to Home Depot and, and whatever they tell me to buy for a lawnmower, that's what I'll get. You're not going to do no damn research about what you need. Oh, man. Good. Hey, we got more lighting here. This is good. This is good. So, I, you know, I, I'm not saying you need to build your own damn computer, but I'm just saying you need to learn a little bit about the lingo and what, what you need to look for. You know, do you, do you want the, the latest display technology? You know, um, back then, I think... Uh, well, they had just came out with the, uh, the, the new port, uh, I can't remember, the display port, okay, which is kind of still the standard today. Uh, and, and I was recommending everybody get that. You know, but people were still buying the old S-video crap, you know, the mo and, and then they would get a monitor with a resolution of like, you know, uh, ridiculously low resolution and, and contrast. And you just like, well, you know, you're just going to be buying a new computer in, in two or three years. If you spend double the amount back then, it's, it's going to last you three times as long because basically by 2016, the computer technology is only advancing at a rate where you need a new computer. I got, well, I got one computer from 2011, and I'm telling you, it's still state of the art. So, you know, for years, okay, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of the stupid people that bought a 286 and then they came out with a 386, and that doesn't mean anything to you if you don't know anything about computers. Uh, but the, 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 the 386 was a revolution above 286 uh, processors in Intel. And uh, yeah, I, I had to buy, I, I, I could have bought a new computer a year later and, and been, you know, three times better off than I was with the 286 processor. But anyway, so yeah, we do make mistakes. And then uh, let's uh, learn how to set up your network router to stream video as well as protect your computers and other mobile devices. So, so how many of you know how to, to um, uh, lock in a MAC address to, uh, um, to a device so that your router will block anything going to that device? Or, uh, you know, 
what a sit is and, and you know, do you want to broadcast it to your neighbors? And, uh, of course, you know, the real basic stuff like, you know, setting your router password uh, and not using the WPA to automatically link to it. And, the uh, you know, I mean, that's just so many things to know about it but it's really not that damn or address reservation okay do you want to use address reservations i mean i could go on and on and on okay i just uh so but this was the book the ultimate cyber security guide for small business and home computing i just wanted to rant and rave and just say how much pleasure i'm taking and i and i i know it's sick i'm a sick man but uh, how much pleasure i'm taking now that that all these these young idiots that don't know crap about cybersecurity are allowing these business, and, and it's, it's really not their fault, okay? Because even when I was coming through these these businesses, because they're in they're in the meatpacking business, they're in the pipeline business, they don't want to pay their IT people worth of crap, so they're probably getting crap people in there to, to do the cybersecurity, and there's no federal. You know, the, the, the federal auditors that come in, they're even bigger idiots than the people working for the damn corporations. I used to hoodwink them all the time when I worked. You know, what what you do is you would set up a, um, uh, well, I, I almost, I want to call it a Trojan horse. Trojan horse is where you, you put a login screen up and somebody logs in and it's not, you know, make it look like the login screen that they're used to seeing, but it's really your login screen. And then when they log in, you've got the, all of their information and, uh, and then, of course, you, you just put up a link like you entered the wrong password. <laughs> you, you log that to a file, and then, uh, and then you've got it. And uh, then, then when they log in the correct way, it don't matter because you've already got the information. So that's, that's like a Trojan horse. So what you would do when the auditors came in, you would, uh, you would lay out some computer, um, some obvious flaws in your security for them to find. Okay, now you're not trying to, because there's no money involved. You know, all they, all they do is they come in and they say, well, you need to fix this and this and this and this. And, uh, you know, and so then, you know, you, you make it easy fixes. You know, you say, oh, wow, I can't believe that I was using the default uh, uh, information in that configuration file. Yeah, I'll change that to, to make it more secure. You know, like uh, SSH uses port 22, for example, you know. FTP uses its port 23. So, you know, you... It, it go into a configuration pile and change the support. I mean, I'm just giving that as an example. They they don't even go that far. They don't even know that shit, you know. But anyway, so so yeah. So you throw up some obvious things that you hope they're going to find because it makes them feel important. And uh, and then when they find it, you know, you say, oh yeah, you're right. I'll change it. You know. Now if there was uh, financial consequences involved for the corporation or the small business or anybody that they, well, they don't even audit the small businesses. That's why they're so vulnerable. Uh, especially the pipelines, probably, uh, you know, probably the pipeline, and I bet the uh, the beat packing plant. I bet there's hadn't been a, a, an audit done there. Uh, it, and you, but the corporation should be paying private companies to do the audit. Of course, you know, you can't depend on the federal government for anything. But uh, but you just let them find it, and then they slap you on the hand. Oh, bad! You need to fix that, and then you go in and you fix it, and you think, whoo, man! Because if you don't leave them something to find, that's really easy. Then they might dig a little deeper, and sometimes you do get one of them that knows a little something, something, and uh, and you gotta, you then you gotta, you know, you gotta go in and do some work to fix the problem. So, but as long as you give them that obvious stuff, they don't want to go no further. So I, you know, I as a system administrator, just to save myself grief, because corporation didn't give a crap that I corporations, you know, because I handled all the encryption for corporations. Now, so. Let's just get to the end of the video here. I'm 57 years old. I've written a thousand page book on cybersecurity. I've stayed up to date with computer technology. What am I doing today? I hike and make videos. Don't really care. I'm learning how to make videos. I'm enjoying it. I think that was one of the problems that my business failed uh, because I couldn't make videos. Um, do you think anybody in the world would hire a 57 year old who hasn't worked in the IT industry in six or seven years? Even though they published a book in 2016, oh, hell no. That's called age discrimination because they want the young bucks in there because they've been trained at, at uh, EIT or, you know, or Harvard or whatever college they went to. And by the way, the colleges, the, it, most of them don't know crap about modern cybersecurity. Now, I, I have been like the University of Detroit Mercy of all places they were pretty cutting edge on, on some of their uh, um, 
technology, but what were they sending their students out to do? They were teaching at the ITT Institute. <coughs> and, and that was a ripoff. They eventually went under, and they took a lot of veterans' money. So, I, you know, I just have no respect, no respect for the cybersecurity industry whatsoever. There's a few good companies out there. There's the Graybeards. Uh, that's a good company. I don't know the actual, but that's I think that's what they call it, Graybeards. It's a bunch of old farts that are out there uh, doing cybersecurity. I sent them my copy of my book. I didn't hear anything back from them, and uh, I just thought, you know, hey, I wouldn't mind uh, doing some part-time work and help them out. But uh, anyway, that's it, man. Hope I didn't make the video too long. This is my last copy of the book. I'll never let go of it. You guys, peace out. <clears throat>